So in the first lesson, I'm going to go over basic collar conditioning. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I've had this dog for exactly one week today. Uh, initially, in that, in that first week, I just have basically had fun with her, you know, got to kind of fill out her personality. I can tell she's a pretty smart dog. She's a quick learner. I uh, don't foresee much problem. I have done a little bit of kennel training, uh, which basically is it just entailed me taking her on the lead and running her in the kennel. And uh, Normally that can take anywhere from a couple of days, that first step a couple of days, to a couple of weeks, uh, depending on how fast your dog learns. So, first step is I take the dog, get him on a lead. You can have, you know, whatever whatever size lead. I like a little bit longer lead for further for uh, future steps. Now this is my training lead. I put the stimulation collar on the dog, uh, although I won't be using it yet. When I start, I say the word and bring the dog there. So, I'll demonstrate. Kennel. 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 I run the dog in the kennel. I don't let her come out, put my foot at the door if I need to. Here, then I call her back out. As I mentioned, she's already done this a few times. Some dogs are a little more stubborn and you have to force them in the kennel. Uh, this is also, if, if you like to do treat training, which I do, I just didn't on this dog because it's so easy. But it, treat training can be a benefit. And in that case, you'll throw a treat in the kennel as you say kennel. The main thing is the, so the dog learns what the command means. Kennel. Kennel. And you can see she's already picking up on this. Here. Each training session should be around 15 minutes long. As I mentioned, end it with a positive note. Kennel. Here. Kennel. Here. So, as you can see, April already pretty much has this step down. So, she knows what it means when I say the word. She knows where she go, is supposed to go. So at this point, I'll pull out my stimulation collar. I set it to the lowest possible setting. Now, this is very important. This is what differentiates people from damaging their dogs and making their dogs do well. I watch the body lingo of the dog. If at any point the dog looks uncomfortable, I know I'm putting too much stimulus on it. If the dog runs in the kennel and won't come out, I know I'm putting too much stimulus on it. So, I'm very careful to use the lowest setting. I, I am a big fan of Tritronics. As I mentioned earlier, I was sponsored by, by Tritronics uh, as a dog trainer and instructor. Um, I personally use the Pro uh, 500 G2 series. This is I've had this thing for about four years, so there's likely an updated version. However, on this it has settings one through six with a low stem, a medium stem, and a high stem if you push both button, buttons. To give you an idea, I usually never stem higher than a two low. So very, very minimal stimulation, and it's on continuous, it's not on the nick. So as long as I'm pushing the button down, is as long as the stimulation goes, okay? So the next step, this would be roughly a week after you've had the dog, the point where she is, is where you start to condition the dog to the collar and teach her to go into the kennel at the same time. So I start off by saying the command, at the same time I will push the stimulation. Kennel. So if you notice the dog's tail didn't change at all, uh, there's no, no difference in her demeanor, she's just going in the kennel. Here. I also still keep, keep her on the lead. Uh, the reason I do that is I want to be able to correct her and put her in the kennel and have the stimulation down the entire time until she's in the kennel. As soon as she goes in the kennel, the stimulation comes off. That's classic negative reinforcement. Here. Kennel. And you can go either side of the dog when you're running them in. Just 
kind of mix things up a little bit so the dog's not following just your uh, visual cues, they're following your voice. Here. dogs are more difficult than she is. I had a uh, cur one time, but it was just, it was almost impossible to get him to go in the kennel. It took me about three weeks just to get him so he knew what the kennel command was. Very, very difficult compared to this dog. April, kennel. Now some people want to know when you can start collar conditioning a dog. I would wait at least until the dog is eight months before I start collar conditioning. You can do any kind of training you want, fun training, positive reinforcement. I just don't do negative reinforcement or punishments until the dog's old enough to understand what's going on. Here. This dog, April, she is just about two years old. So she's plenty old enough. Kennel. Now, normally I'll do this on the lead for a couple of days. Uh, April seems like she's figuring this out, and plus I want to uh, show some people on, you know, show you guys on the video a little bit quicker so I don't have to wait. So I'm going to expedite things a little bit. That being said, she may not, may not quite be ready, and you might see some, some issues with her with this, but we'll get it on film. Here. So I've taken her off the lead. The other thing is, is she pretty much already knows the here command, and that's based on every time she comes out of the kennel, I say here and give her a tug on the lead. So we'll start this. April, here. Now, I didn't have to stimulate her, but I would have if she didn't come. April, kennel. April, 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 kennel. Now, the entire time, the stimulation was on her. I didn't let it off for one second. Here. April. Good girl. I don't mind if a dog, one of these little dogs, jumps up on me. I actually prefer it, so I don't have to bend down and pet him. I know with the, with the bigger dogs, I don't let them jump up on me. I don't mind it so much with these guys. April, kennel. Kennel. Now, she's given me a little bit of resistance there, and that's because she's not on the lead. This is new for her. Uh, I almost went up to a medium stem on her there, but I didn't have to. I just left it on the low. Here. A lot of positive reinforcement in between my sessions. Kennel. Kennel. Here. Good girl. Good girl. Oh, good girl. And I don't want to make it too rigorous. I give her some time in between. Uh, one of the mistakes I've seen and mistakes I've, I've made on, on dogs that are softer is I'll, I'll apply some pressure and, and they, it'll be less of a game and the dog will end up wanting to sit in the kennel and not come out. Uh, if you get to that point, back off, back way off, um, you know, you may need to not stimulate the dog anymore for a while. April, kennel. Kennel. 
Kennel. Kennel. So, right there, she came out of the kennel early. You're going to see that happen with dogs all the time. They all want to push the limit, and they take my verbal cue, or they take my visual cues. Anytime I walk back, I've been calling her name. Uh, so she thinks that when I walk back, that means it's okay to come. I, I want to make sure that I make a distinction between that periodically and walk back without actually calling the dog. If the dog goes out, then I stimulate her. Here. Good girl. You notice the dog is still pretty happy. Not too much pressure. April. Kennel. Kennel. I personally point when I do this, and the reason why is as we train further, uh, I use the kennel command to basically mean go wherever I'm pointing. Um, so whether it's into her dog cage, into the back of the truck loading, into a canoe, anything like that. When I say that word and point in a direction, she goes there. Here. Good girl. Good girl. Hey, kennel. Kennel. resisting me it tells me one of two things that one there's not probably not quite enough stimulation and two she's getting bored of what we're doing there's a couple things we can do with this uh, we could stop now but I want to stop on a positive note so I'm going to do a couple more and get her get her going real good and then when she hits it solid we'll stop the other thing is you, I could go to an area where there's not as many distractions. Initially, that's the kind of place you want to train in. Uh, unfortunately for this video, I, uh, the, the area I normally train is dark, and uh, video doesn't work. But uh, just barely, a, the uh, crow flew over, and she got barely distracted by that, as you can see. April, here. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. April. Kennel. Kennel. Now a dog can read a lot from the inflection in your voice. If you're acting bored and monotone, she will too. I have a tendency to do that when I'm training because it's not real exciting for me. Um, but when I see that she starts to do that, I can change my inflection. You'll see how much different the dog reacts. Come on, come on. Come on. Oh, good girl, good girl. Okay, okay. Kennel, kennel. You see, she picks up her pace, acts a little more excited. You know, just another trick to get a dog motivated. Here you go. Here you go. Oh, that's a good girl. Good girl, April. Good girl. Oh, yeah. Go here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Good girl. Here. Now, I personally, I don't like to stem the dog coming out of the kennel when I call here. Uh, as I said before, if the dog is wanting to stay in the kennel, you're probably applying too much pressure. So the next lesson that we'll go over is repeating the same basic stuff with distraction. As the uh, dog masters this, which you can expect about a week, um, before they're really, really doing this well. Every time you say it, the dog goes where it's supposed to go. Then I'll introduce it, distraction.